Uh, so I have titled this talk using Jupiter at NERSC a primer um, because I am just going to give a really um, high level overview of uh, Jupiter and using Jupiter at NERSC. Um, and I'll kind of, I know we're focusing a lot on best practices, so I'll kind of throw in a couple top tips um, for your Jupiter experience at NERSC. So, um, all right, what is Jupiter? When we talk about Jupiter at NERSC, we kind of use this uh, Jupiter as an umbrella term to refer to a collection of many things, um, most of which start with the term Jupiter. Um, users access shareable Jupiter, what are called notebooks, via the Jupiter Lab interface, all of which is offered to you um, via Jupiter Hub. So, if you've ever heard of a Jupyter Notebook, maybe you're curious, um, what can you do with it? What is it? Um, you can put code. Um, most people uh, tend to use Jupyter for Python. Um, so this is a, a good segue from, from using Python in the terminal to using Python in a Jupyter interface. Um, but Jupyter offers a really rich environment for narrating your code and sharing it. So you can write, um, explanations and equations in Markdown. You can render your plots in the notebook there itself. So you don't have to do something like make a plot via your um, you know, code and then copy it onto your local computer in order to look at it. Um, and there are also interactive widgets. So you can, um, if you can see in this bottom right here, um, you can uh, open up interactive plots with sliders. And so you can, um, you can use it for all sorts of really rich visualization applications in addition to um, running your analysis code. Um, so what kind of applications, you know, what, what would you do this? Um, people use uh, notebooks for data cleaning and data transformation. Um, I myself do this all the time. I uh, run a couple meetings at NERSC um, and we try to make very data driven decisions. And for me, the easiest way to clean up my data um, that comes out of Slurm and put it into a plot that makes sense is to um, load that up into a notebook and, and run with that. Um, so people use it for for data cleaning, data analysis, data transformation, a lot of visualization that I was um, talking about a minute ago. And um, more and more commonly, people use Jupyter to run machine learning um, frameworks. So um, your PyTorch, your TensorFlow, um, any other workflows and analytics frameworks, um, Dask for parallel Python, X-Array, which might look um, a lot like NumPy, but uses Dask under the hood for parallelization. So there, you can use a wide range of things in a Jupyter notebook. And I should also take a minute um, to note just that um, when you go to the Jupyter interface at NERSC, not only can you run notebooks, you can actually pop open a terminal. Um, and a lot of people quite like doing this. Um, the, um, you just have an in-browser terminal um, that you can navigate the file system like you would a terminal on your desktop. Um, but it's it's accessible from any browser you have access to with your NERSC uh, credentials for logging into Jupyter. So how do we get there? Um, in your browser, you will go to jupyter.nurse.gov. Um, this is the biggest, this is number one, the big number one takeaway is how to get to Jupyter at NERSC, jupyter.nurse.gov. Um, so when you get there, you will be presented um, with a page, uh, which is mostly blank, but we'll have you sign in through our federated identity system. Um, in this little example uh, page here, you can see that we've got, oh, uh, something wrong with another system that might impact your Jupyter usage. It can sometimes be the case that something feels slow um, or Jupyter is lagging a little bit, but more times than not, um, since you're accessing the you know large shared HPC system through Jupyter, you're kind of seeing what's happening on the system through Jupyter. So it's not that Jupyter itself is um, necessarily lagging per se, but maybe a file system is having a bad day. Anyway, so you got into Jupyter, you've authenticated, and then you're presented with a row of buttons. Um, and each of these uh, different buttons, which I'll talk a little bit more um, on the next slide, uh, spawns a different type of what we call a server. And then once you've gotten your server, you can run a notebook, you can open a terminal, you can edit files within the server, all within um, this unified Jupyter interface in your browser. So how do you choose what kind of server to spawn? Um, 
When you log in, you'll see these four different um, kinds of servers. For this to the left is um, a shared, what we call a shared CPU node. These servers are launched onto a login node. So you click this button and it's kind of effectively like getting, getting onto a login node. Um, it's the same Python environment as if you just SSH into a login node. You can use um, this uh, command to submit jobs here, your notebook. But it's very important um, to remember that you're on a login node and login nodes are shared resources. So best practice if you're doing something like um, you know training for machine learning um, or running some sort of really heavy calculations in your notebook, you will want to use one of the further right buttons. So either an exclusive CPU node, an exclusive GPU node, or a configurable job. These are um, sort of the Jupyter analog to batch jobs. And it is actually a batch job under the hood. Um, so what, what these buttons do, these three on the left, is that they spin up a batch job, and it starts and then connects your server to that batch job. And so you land in um, you land on a compute node, but in a notebook server. So you can run more intense um, calculations, and you're just confined to your node and not um, not stepping on anyone else on the login nodes. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so the two middle buttons are kind of like preset defaults. Just just start a job. If you um, need something a little bit more finely tuned uh, for this to the right is this configurable job button. And so when you click that button, um, what it looks like is that you'll get this um, page with drop down options that you can pick from. Um, you can use uh, multiple nodes through this option. So if you're running something that can use two, three, four nodes, um, then you can um, do that via a configurable job. The other two, um, Batch job types just use one node as sort of a default, um, and it's it's good um, for a lot of folks. But we we do have folks who use this configurable job setting as well. Um, okay, so so you've got your job, you're you're in your notebook, or you know you've got your server, and you're in your notebook, and uh, this is what your notebook looks like. Um, on the right is kind of the bulk of it. Uh, there are what are called cells. You can put bits of code in these cells and run the cells. And then um, any visualization output is rendered right there in the notebook. On the left-hand side, you've got your file browser. So you can see um, down at the bottom left, I've got a whole bunch of notebooks called untitled whatever, um, because uh, that's what happens when you do a lot of Jupyter testing. You just spin these things up. Um, you can browse uh, you can set uh, favorites on the file system so if you do a lot of work in scratch and you get very tired of um, having to navigate that from your home directory where Jupyter notebooks are created you can add a favorite um, and you can do that with TFS um, or scratch or wherever you're working with whatever makes the most sense for your workflow and your data um, we're particularly proud of that uh, favorites and these um, you can jump to anywhere um, in the file system and some of these recent places. Um, some of these additions are actually from NERSC um, that were developed uh, here and then upstreamed into Jupyter. And so, um, you know, not only do we work on supporting Jupyter here at NERSC, but we also try um, to contribute to the project itself. Okay. Um, this is sort of the last big uh, topic that I'll try to run through a little bit quick because um, I see we're short on time. Um, kernels are how you compute with Jupyter. So you know maybe you've gone into you you've got your Python and uh, Conda environment, and that's that's good and that's cool and it's working in your terminal. But it would be really great if you could use that in your Jupyter notebook. And the the excellent news is that you can, and we absolutely um, welcome users to do so. So the kernel is what your Jupyter server actually talks to when you access it. Um, so by default, it's just the NERSC Python, but um, it can be other languages like R or Julia, um, and you can bring your own kernel, which a lot of people do. It's a very, very popular thing to do at NERSC. So um, a common question is, I've got my Conda environment. It's working really well. How can I use it from Jupyter? In uh, in your Conda environment, once you've activated it, you can install a package called IPyKernel, which is 
um, kind of what you might think. Um, and you'll use a Python uh, command to run ipykernel to install a kernel. All of this is in our documentation. Um, we'll send out the slides. You don't have to do this. This is not like a follow along code tutorial right now. Um, but so you install this and you create what's called a kernel spec file. And then you sort of do a log out login on Jupyter and then your kernel should show up. And then you can use um, that to run notebooks and code uh, using your custom, custom conda environment. Um, so that just creates this uh, JSON file in your home directory. You don't need to know too much about it, but you can um, customize these kernel spec files. So for example, if you need specific libraries, um, you can set up your environment for the, um, the kernel and these environment variables will be set. Um, and you can also uh, put in place a kernel helper script. So if you make heavy use of um, modules provided by NERSC, um, you can actually load these modules and then use your notebook with those modules loaded. And that can be done with this kernel helper script. So this is pretty flexible and a lot of people like to do this too. Um, but sort of the bottom line here is that there are a couple of different ways to use and create kernels um, for uh, more advanced Jupyter usage for custom packages. And um, we encourage you to do whatever makes the most sense for your workflow. And that also includes uh, the availability of creating a kernel spec file using a shifter image. So if you're, if you're coming to us with an already containerized workflow, um, that's great. Um, you'll want to do the setup steps um, needed to, uh, for shifter, and then you can use um, the shifter image and the path to Python in, in that image and use your notebook in your shifter image. So um, debugging issues, there's a log file that's created in your home directory that you can take a look at. Um, having said that, it can be very noisy and depending on your level of expertise, the errors in there may or may not be very meaningful to you. Um, but just as a heads up, we do have some logging in, in everybody's home directory. Um, and maybe you're wondering, am I like, do people use this? Am I the only person who's gonna be using Jupyter at NERSC? Absolutely not. Jupyter is quite popular um, and seems to be getting only ever more popular. Um, so we're we're at the point where maybe a third, coming up on 40% of users coming into NERSC come in through Jupyter. Um, which is cool. Uh, it makes me a little nervous as someone who supports Jupyter, but I'm very glad that people like it. I'm glad that we can offer this interface. Um, and, and, and we really do invite you to use it. So um, in summary, this, this is my first and second point. You are, are welcome and encouraged to go to jupyter.nurse.gov to use Jupyter at NERSC. Um, you can customize your experience by way of kernels. And if you um, need help, please go to help.nurse.gov and, and give us a shout. Um, that, that's really the bottom line and probably the biggest takeaway, and I know you're tired of hearing it already, um, but the last thing we want is for you to get wedged and, and get stuck and not know how to proceed. Um, that's, that's what we're here for. Um, give us a shout. Even if you feel like it's a silly question, it's a win-win. It's something we can answer quickly, so you get going more quickly. We feel good about answering, you know, helping someone out and getting them back on their feet. And so um, welcome to NERSC, welcome to our, our Jupyter experience. 